Hi, this is Dr. Debbie Pates. Welcome to uh, work from home yoga break. I do recognize the irony that you are sitting in front of your computer and watching this as a break for what is probably for most of us many, many more hours in front of the computer than we are used to. So I appreciate you being game. Now I'm gonna back up and join you on my mat. So this is gonna be a fairly gentle flow. Oh, if you notice, I'm sitting here on a block and the, the reason is it's more comfortable for me to sit for extended periods on a block. If you see, when I sit cross-legged, my knees are fairly high that's just the way my hips are made, or maybe because I use my body in ways that keep my hips tight. So if I sit kind of on the edge of a block here, getting myself positioned, you see that my I can sit in a way that my knees are down, which is a lot more comfortable for a more extended period of time. So if you don't have a block, you could probably use a book or you could certainly use a, a pillow. Just get creative. Anyway, without further ado, um, begin to roll your neck. Sorry, I'm just uh, moving something here. Okay, so what I want you to do is start to roll your neck. Drop your chin to your chest and maybe pause here and even sort of gently Interlace your hands by the sides of your head if you're not feeling enough sensation. So I want you to be very conscious that all we're looking for is sensation. And if it's enough to just drop your chin to your chest, sometimes people feel this all the way down their back, even to kind of the base of their spine sitting on the ground. So clearly that would be enough. Only interlace your hands behind your head and let the weight of your arms, no pulling here, just letting the weight of your arms increase the stretch a little bit. Only do that if you need more. And then release and roll your head to the right so that your right ear is coming toward, <coughs> excuse me, your right shoulder. You might play around a little bit with, are you looking straight ahead? Do you angle your chin down a little bit? And just like uh, when your chin is to your chest, if you need more, take your hand and really gently, I'm not pulling, right? I'm just placing my hand on the side of my head so, to increase, so that the weight of my hand increases the stretch a little bit. And still, if you need more, push out through the base of your left palm. <coughs> center and to the left. Reconnect with the tall spine. You don't want to be kind of cheating and leaning over. It's not really cheating. It's just you're, you're looking for a neck stretch here. So sitting up tall and moving only your neck is going to maximize that if you want. Again, left hand on top of your head. Perhaps pushing up through the base of your right hand and breathe. So we're just starting from this movement. Your body's not warmed up. Be gentle and generous with yourself, as I hope you are being in this time in general. Release, roll your head back to center, and then keep rolling. Going at whatever speed feels good to you. I would recommend something not, not too fast. Noticing the snap, crackle, pops, Pausing at any time, maybe to just, mm, feels good right here. And then the next time you get back to center, reverse direction. Continue to breathe as you make these head rolls. Maybe in this direction you notice more tendons and ligaments making noise. Come on back to center and lift your head up and in, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears and then let them go. Drop them. Shrug them up. Maybe inhale here and then drop them. Maybe if you feel as you drop them a release down your back. 
And now start to make shoulder rolls. So roll your shoulders forward, up and back, and maybe exaggerating the, the moving back part of this, right? So, so often when we sit in front of our computer, we begin to kind of slouch forward. So we're reversing that. A lot of what we're gonna do now is working to open up our backs, open up our hearts, and then squeeze your shoulders back and down. Clasp your hands together behind your back. And just allow your hands, you're not, allow your hands to lift toward away from your back as high as you can. Continue to breathe, squeeze your shoulder blades together. It should feel good. So you want it to feel good. When you get to a point where it's too much, I would suggest you've probably gone too far. Just back off come to a place where it feels like an opening but not uh, pushing too far. Release your hands. Bring your hands to your knees or your, your thighs, whatever you can grab onto fairly easily and flex your spine forward, maybe even tilting your tailbone, tilting your pelvis and then exhale, curl. So seated cat cows, moving through your spine, including your pelvis if you can, including your neck. So unlike spinal flexion in Kundalini yoga, which has you keeping your chin level, I'm inviting you, you can certainly do that, but I'm inviting you to move your entire spine and then come on back to center and inhale your arms up. Bring your right hand behind you and your left hand to your right thigh. Maybe you grab onto the block if you're sitting on it or you um, and twist. You grab onto the block or perhaps the floor. Just twist. It's real gentle here. Inhale back up to center and exhale. Left hand behind you on the floor or block. Right hand on your left thigh. And just a gentle twist. We'll twist more in a bit. Come on back to center and walk your, you may want to remove the block here. I'm not going to though. I'm just going to lean forward, lean sideways a little bit more. Walk your hands, your right hand, as far away from you as you can toward your side while still keeping both butt cheeks on the floor or your block or whatever you're sitting on. Up and over with your left hand. And you can play, right? Usually we talk about twisting open so you want to turn your heart toward the sky do that maybe you also play with turning your heart toward the earth right we're just looking to open open the body that's been so tight come on up center and do the same thing other side crawl your left hand away from you reach up and over mm, let it feel good and whatever you want with your neck maybe look down maybe look up with your body with your neck Keep breathing, please. Just let it feel good. And then come on back to center. I'm gonna remove my block right now. Um, you don't have to, you may wanna keep it there to give it a try. Move into a straddle. So separate your legs as far as is comfortable. This is the length of my straddle. So I would like you guys to do the length of your straddle. Don't, um, don't limit your practice because of what my body looks like. Maybe your legs are a lot wider than this and walk forward. Try to still maintain a, a somewhat of a pelvic tilt here. Walk forward and take a few breaths. So don't, don't try to go to max just yet. Just a few, maybe 30% maybe of your max, okay? And take a few breaths right here. And, and check in with your low back. How does that feel? Mid back, upper back. And then go another, maybe 30%. So you're, you're, you're approaching max of what you've got here folding forward. So for some of us, that may be a lot more forward than I am. And if it's hard for you to stay upright, grab your block if you're not sitting on it. You can put your hands on it. And then go all the way. Take it to your 100%. 
And you're not looking to curl forward though. You want to try to move your chin as far away as possible, elongating your spine. Maybe reach out and grab your big toes if that's accessible to you and if that's helpful and comfortable. And let your neck be long. So think about, you don't want to have chin to chest, but maybe imagining, which is actually true, that your neck is part of your spine. So keeping, bringing your neck back in line with your spine, maybe even tucking in your chin a little bit, almost looking to make a bit of a double chin here. Don't worry, you're home alone, nobody can see you. Breathe. And then if you've got your toes, release them and walk over to one side. Turn your body over your leg as best as you can. One hand on either side and bow forward. Again, trying to get your crown of your head beyond your toes. Notice if you got kind of light in your opposite butt cheek and bring that guy back down. And that may mean you come out of your stretch a little bit. Okay. So what are you serving here, your body or your ego? Breathe. If you want, bring your left elbow. Well, I have my left leg. I'm extended over my left leg. Whatever leg you're on, bring that same elbow on the inside of the knee. Use some leverage. Roll your body open to the side. Arm up and over. And do, what, do whatever feels comfortable with your neck. You can look down. You can look neutral. Or maybe looking up. And maybe you play around with this. Come on back. Walk through center. Other side. Square yourself over your other leg. Engage with the long spine and then bow. Trying to come <clears throat> out of your low back. Walking your hands forward rather than keeping them toward your body. And if you have the flexibility to bring elbows to the ground, try to bring your inside elbow down first. Right? It's easy to roll open and bring the outer elbow on. Keeps this, the more integrity of the stretch if you bring the inside elbow down first. And then speaking of inside elbow, if you're like me on the right side or whatever side you're on, bring that same elbow to the inside of the leg you were bowing over. Use some leverage to roll open. And maybe reach your opposite arm up and over. Some people might be able to grab their toes here. What you're seeing is the limits of my flexibility, but don't let that create limits for you. Keep your opposite butt cheek on the ground. Imagining your butt cheek, your butt bone, let's say, plugged into the ground and your fingertips reaching away from that. Come on back center and sit up. Bring your feet flat on the floor. We're going to do a seated figure four, which is a hip stretch. And we're going to include a couple of hip stretches moving in here because um, all that sitting that we're doing is, is tightening our hips. And if, if like a lot of people, you are um, also kind of getting out and walking more, that may be impacting your hips as well. So with all that said, feet flat on the ground, cross your right ankle on top of your left knee and bring your hands behind you. Roll your shoulders up, back and down, squeeze your shoulder blades together. You may be able to see, I'm on my fingertips right now because that's what feels more comfortable to me. So if you need more in this position, as always, if you feel like, ooh, this is good enough, which is kind of actually what I'm feeling right now, then it's good enough. Don't make any other movements. But if you need more, then maybe you walk your hands more towards your butt. Maybe you walk your front foot. You just kind of tighten it all up a little bit. And I'm going to loosen mine now. Another way that you can make this more intense is by using the muscles of your thigh and pushing your knee away from you. So where you're feeling this probably is going to be in your glutes, your hips, maybe your thigh, maybe your hamstring. Maybe you're feeling it somewhere else. And that's just where your body is opening up first, and that's fine. Keep breathing. 
keep being active in the posture, right? So as you stay in it, you may make other changes. You may say, okay, I'm ready to tighten it up a little bit or come down onto my palms, not my fingertips, whatever it is. Notice my front foot is actively flexed here. And then we're gonna turn this into a seated twist. So take that bottom foot, your left foot, and tuck it in next to your right glute. Put both butt cheeks on the ground. Let your right foot come on the outside of your left thigh. Bring your right hand behind you. Inhale up and start with your torso, right? Using your stomach muscles, not your hands. Really use, you can almost, you can even put your hand right in front of you and kind of watch, use your stomach muscles and watch your hand come across. And then when you can't twist anymore, hook your elbow on your thigh and maybe, maybe you deepen a little bit, maybe you don't. Open it out, maybe taking a, a counter twist, a wide counter twist. And then come on back to center. Put both feet flat, feet flat, and switch sides. So put your left ankle, foot flexed on top of your right foot. Like most people, I am having a very different experience on this side than the other side. So you suss it out for yourself, right? Do you want your fingers, tips tented? How close do you want? Do you want to tighten this up or do you want to keep it nice and open like it is? Do you want to use the muscles in your thigh to push your knee forward and away from you and take a few breaths here. The breath helps us tolerate difficult moments. If we breathe deeply and steadily, we're sending a message to our brain. This may be uncomfortable, but I don't need to panic. I'm calm. I've got this. Hmm. We do have this, you guys. We've got this. The breath, concentrating on the breath also keeps you grounded in the present moment. If you need to make adjustments and you haven't already for a few more breaths, go ahead and do that. Please don't criticize yourself for how your body's showing up. It just is what it is. It's just showing up this way. Spinal twist, bring your right foot toward the left. Let your left foot come over your right thigh. You wanna plant it kind of flat. Bring, extend your right arm out and bring your left hand behind your back and begin to twist using yeah, the muscles in your torso, following your gaze, a little bit of leverage maybe from that back hand. And then when you can't twist anymore, hook your elbow on your thigh. And maybe you want to deepen it. Maybe you want to look over at your left shoulder. Maybe that doesn't feel good. So then you would just keep your chin in line with your sternum. Unwind, open twist. Mm, that feel good. And then come on back to center. Um, we're going to do another hip opener here. And this is a hip opener that I cannot do. Um, or, I mean, I can, but we're going to do an arm position that I can't do without a strap. And I put my, oh, I put my strap over here. So, um, Actually, you know what, if you don't have a strap, you, and which you may not, you can use an old tie, you can use a sock. I'm actually going to, I will take this off and use this. See, so you can just get creative with what you do or don't have around the house. Um, and if you can't, if you don't have anything that you can use, well, one, of course, you could pause this and go get something, a little dish towel, but also just don't worry about it. Trying is good enough. So we're going to move into cow face. Um, with cow face, it's, um, you may still be, you may have come directly to a cross-legged position because I didn't talk to you about it and then just on it. But what you want to do is you're going to bring your left heel in really close toward your right, well, well actually, what you're going to do is stack your knees, okay? So bring your, have your left leg on the bottom and then bring your right leg on top and put your knees on top of each other. So it's not your standard cross-legged position. And you want to have your feet kind of even with each other. So they may be close to your butt. They may be further away. And one way to help you get a little bit more 
comfortable in this posture is, and it, it is uncomfortable, I acknowledge that, is to put your hands on the ground, lift up a little bit, and then just kind of situate your, your sit bones on the ground. You can stay right here, or we got our right leg on top, so we're going to take our right hand and lift it up and drop it back. I, I'm holding my, my blanket here, my sweater, whatever it is. And then your right hand comes behind your back and it, try to get it up there in between your shoulder blades and clasp fingers so that you'd be clasping your fingers like this or maybe you can even get a nice solid grip. I can't get any grip, which is why I use this and I bridge that gap with my sweater or strap or whatever it is you're using. You don't, you want to try not to let your top elbow put your head forward, right? So we're also squeezing your shoulder blades together. This is very intense. Breathe. And if it isn't intense for you, feel free to bow forward, keeping your hands in the same position and your feet in the same position. As we hold a pose, your body is going to open more and more into it. So allow your position to change slightly. We're not looking for a lot of movement, but if you feel like maybe your shoulder can open a little bit or you can wiggle your fingers up or whatever, yeah? Just allowing that to happen. And then release your top hand. The bottom hand usually likes to come out slowly. So just let that happen. And uh, here's a fun way to get into the other side. Of course, you can simply switch the cross of your legs or you can come forward and come on to your feet and do this fun little disco twist and ta-da you're in the position on the other side so if you did that you're still probably going to need to lift up your hips and even out where your feet are hmm, take a couple of breaths here Give you guys a minute to get into it if you didn't that disco twist eluded you please don't worry about it but it's kind of fun if you can do it you can also come on your head and do a headstand and recross your legs and then okay we got our left leg on top this time so if you need your block or, or your strap rather um and you know what i would suggest if you needed it on the last time some people do need it on one side and not the other but give it a try with it um or either way i don't really care drop your right hand behind your back and then left hand comes up and you try to clasp. You, you may even try, start trying with your strap. And if you can, wiggle your fingers up enough to clasp them. Then just do that and let the strap go. If you need more, bowing forward. Everybody's body's different. I invite you during this home practice, remember don't, don't push your head forward too much. To really allow yourself, give yourself the space to explore. There's nobody else here, or maybe somebody, your, your partner, your family member, a, a close friend, right, with whom you are, are still in physical proximity. So, so but, but hopefully what I'm saying is you feel comfortable with that person. So really give yourself latitude to explore, to not need to perform, which I hope that you never need to perform in a yoga class. But really allow yourself to just be where you are. Maybe taking it a little further, maybe experimenting, or maybe saying, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good right here. Release your top hand. Let your bottom hand come out slowly. Maybe roll your neck around a little bit. And um, we're going to move into something different now. So um, opening up our hips, opening up our heart. We're going to do some uh, back bends. But their back bends laying on your stomach, Sup uh, not supine, anyway, um, prone, prone back bends. So when you, I, don't, I don't like the word back bend, I invite you to think about it not as a back bend, but as a heart opener, okay? So unwind your legs, and let, let's come through a quick child's pose. I was actually going to do this posture later, but um, let's do it now. Start with child's pose. Bring your knees wide, arms out in front of you, and let your forehead rest on the ground. Take a couple of breaths in child's pose. 
And then let's turn it into Anahatasana, puppy dog pose. Anahata is your heart in Sanskrit. So you bring your knees, uh, your, your hips over your knees. Still let your forehead rest. But if you see, my upper body's actually pretty active here. My arms are off the ground. I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together. If you're much more flexible than me, and frankly most people, you may be able to put your chest on the ground. And if you are that person, then you might also get more benefit from putting your chin on the ground. Thread the needle. Take your right hand and slide it palm up underneath your left armpit. Turn your left ear to the mat and, or right ear, sorry, and come onto the top of your right shoulder. And then make whatever adjustments you need to, possibly angling your, your left side toward the floor more. Some people like to put their forehead on the mat here. Let it feel good. Make whatever adjustments shifts in your, in your top hand. Opening up through the backs of your shoulders here. And then switch sides, come on back center. Slide your left armpit, left arm, left hand, palm up underneath your right armpit. And the same things, right? Maybe shift your hips side to side. Come out, come onto the top of your left shoulder. Maybe you're on your left ear, maybe you're on your forehead. Maybe you wanna angle your chest differently, maybe walk your top hand around. Just easing yourself into this posture and then being still for a few breaths. And then come on back to center and just slide onto your stomach. Release your hands, uh, release your tops of your feet rather, and um, bring your hands by your ears. Come to the tops of your knees, feet are flat on the ground. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, roll your shoulders up, back and down, squeeze your elbows in, and then on an inhale, come to Cobra, lift up. And I invite you, a lot of times I will teach Cobra Feel free to put weight into your hands. And you, of course, you can do that now. But maybe this time, lift your hands up off the ground, right? So that you really feel this coming from your back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Maybe look down a little bit so that you're not cranking your neck up. And then release. Bring your hands alongside your body, palms facing up, arms alongside your body and turn your head to one side. Notice how close your chin is to your shoulder. And if you want, maybe keeping your ear on the floor, move your chin up a little bit. Maybe, if you want. Come on back to center. Clasp your hands behind your back and on an inhale, lift as much as you can. Squeeze your palms together and pull them down and away and up, but you're really looking for length more than height. So try to energize through your legs, maybe even lifting your thighs off the ground. But again, you don't wanna crank your low back here. You just wanna lengthen and strengthen. Release, palms up by your side. Turn your head to the other direction. Chin by your shoulder, do you want to lift it up a little? Your choice. Enjoy this. Because now it's over. Turn your head back to center and we're going to do bow pose. Bend your knees, reach back and grab your feet from the outside. And if, you can also grab them from the inside, that's it's taught that way sometimes. If like me, you made your feet very wide, or knees rather, very wide to grab onto your feet, bring your knees about hip width distance as if you were just kind of standing. And then on an inhale, lift. You don't have to go very far. You don't have to go to your max, right? But kick into your hands, or yeah, kick into your hands and let the kick, help, open up your shoulders so that you're kind of hanging off your own feet. And breathe. 
different schools of yoga say different things about the breath in this posture. Kundalini yoga says let the breath rock you back and forth, which is kind of fun. So if you want to do that, then go ahead. I exaggerated that rock. And then release. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. And just allow your body to come up and into child's pose. Maybe even take a restorative child's pose. So have your knees together and your forehead on the floor and your hands alongside your body, palms facing up. And in this posture, let your shoulders really round. This is also called seed pose. And like a seed, we already have everything in us that we need. We just need the right atmosphere, the right environment in which to grow, in which to flourish. And I really invite you as you're here in this restorative child's pose, also known as bija seed pose, to consider what shifts that have been happening recently since COVID-19 came into our lives are actually creating better environment for you. Perhaps you are better able to flourish under some of the circumstances now, and maybe the opposite, but I'm only inviting you to notice, to become aware of, and to acknowledge. From here, round up, swing your legs around, come onto your butt, bring your legs in front of you, and roll onto your back, and we're going to do um, be, watch out for your furniture and stuff. Actually, I'm going to spin around here. Um, we're going to do plow. So hands flat by your side. Actually, lift your legs up. Lift your arms up. And reach for your toes. A little bit of core here. My butt's on the ground. You could lift it up if you want. Well, my butt's supposed to be on the ground. Reach for your toes. Lift, drop it. Drop your hands about a foot off the ground and drop your right leg. Reach for your right toes. Right leg back up. Drop your left foot. Reach for your left toes. Legs back up, enough of that. Put your palms on the floor and using a little bit of momentum. Please don't turn your head once we get into this posture. Swing your hips up. Put your hands on your back and reach for the floor behind you with your toes. Some people's toes may be easily on the ground. If that's you, perhaps point your toes and slide your feet a little bit even further away from you. If your feet are not on the ground like mine, then keep your hands on your low back. If your feet are on the ground, you may experiment with walking your, clasping your hands and walking your shoulder blades toward each other. And wherever you are now, Clasp, uh, bring your hands to your low back and one leg at a time to protect your low back. Oh, first I forgot to say, drop your hips into your hands a little bit and then bring your legs up, shoulder stand. When was the last time your legs were over your head? Right, so we've probably been doing a lot of sitting in chairs or walking around or biking or whatever it is that you're doing but if it's not gymnastics or yoga, you probably have had your feet down and your head up. So reversing that, reversing that flow of gravity for a little while, and then drop your feet back down into plow, place your hands on the ground and roll down onto your back. And that is the end of this flow that I'm gonna guide you through if you would like to remain uh, on your back in Shavasana, then feel free to do so for as long as you like. Otherwise, namaste. Thank you for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day.